can't believe it. It's like on time for the first time because it's like the first one this year. I can't believe it. We are What's live. going on, Mr. Smurf? It's like the first one of the year. First one of 2020, baby. Um, 2022. 2022. Well, I'm still in Yeah, you're like two years behind. Back when, you know, <laughs> pre-COVID. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because this was pre-COVID 2020. Oh, man. What is up? Uh, Alfred Auto Spa. We got in here. XYZ Auto Detail. What's going on? Yep, uh, yep. DRD. DRD's in the building. Granular Auto Spa. What is up, everybody? Yeah, I um, know him. Berto's flipping back and forth. Let me turn. Uh, let me turn my phone down because uh, I got Fab sitting on my phone down below. Dang Fab! <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! Fab is wearing my hat. That's funny. He's wearing my glove box hat too. Is he? What's up, Keith? How you doing? HM Auto D telling what's going on. Big Jizzlinger, what's going on? The Jizzlinger, what's going on, man? That's funny as heck. And Neil White, I know Neil White, he's got both. He's got like two screens on, so Neil's got like Fab on one and us on the other. <laughs> That's funny that, that Fab has to stream at the same time as we do, and he's got to wear the same hat as us. That's heck of funny. It's like he knew what we were going to be wearing. I know, right? <laughs> oh, did I, do I have a thing? Oh, that must be you that must have it on. Because that's yeah. like, man, let me take my thing. Let me turn that down. I, got a, <laughs> I wanted to know, because he did, uh, if you saw his video, he did um, that Wi-Fi. The, yeah, the, I watched it this morning. I told him, I said, now the real test is a live stream. So I think he really wanted to test it and see if his Wi-Fi would work. Um, yeah. You know, it works, you know. Oh, we got Jamie the Cleaner up in the house. What is happening? What's up, Mark Susie? What's going on? Jamie the Cleaner, what is going on? Welcome in, everybody. You guys, tonight, um, Mike, you know, Mike and I have been expecting um, Pro Wax. I think I still have the bottle. Let me see. Uh, I got one sitting right over here. Oh, wait. Got to turn around, reach. Uh, this was in uh, this was in the glove box a few months ago. If you guys September, the Synergy paint from from, from Pro Wax. Um, I used it on that Range Rover that I did the correction and coating on. So I I have some questions of my own for sure. Yep. Yep. So. Yeah, so what we have the, green, what's the what? green uh the green little asterisk button? Yeah, I don't know either. That's a good oh let me, let me highlight them and see what it does. Does that mean know. you're gonna be giving out free money? I don't know. I don't know. Are we frozen? No. We ain't frozen. What's up, Neil White? Ryan, what's going on? I don't know. Big Jill Sling. He's green. Hey. Make it a rain. That's all I know. Can you hear me, Mike? Oh, I hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, but I, uh, for some reason, uh, my. No, he's gone. His, hey, you know what? He he watched Fab's uh, Wi Fi thing. He couldn't get to figure out how to Wi Fi work in his own garage. That's pretty funny. So, uh, while we wait for Eric, Eric to go work on his Wi-Fi connection, uh, he bounced back and forth between this and Fab. No problem, Neil. I I know what you, I know what's going on because you know Brian did get a new uh, Wi-Fi connection through that brick wall, so it's working out. So I don't want to keep my guest too long going backstage because you know he is on the East Coast and uh, he is three hours ahead of me, so it's like nine o'clock his time, and I don't want to keep him up past ten. So uh, his time is precious. So I want to introduce to you from Proax, Brian Finn, who is also Detailer of the Year. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> nominated okay. Detailer of the Year? What's that? Were you nominated for Detailer of the Year? Nominated, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Hopefully so, I did enough to get, uh, to get um, Detailer of the Year. We'll see. 
What, what's that? What, so how did that come along for nomination detail of the year? What did you have to do for that? Uh, you had to have um, customers send in um, uh, a entry form for you with like okay. a 125 word um, reason why you should be detailer of the year. Yeah, because you, you detailed some like big ass dump trucks and stuff too, huh? <laughs> I do. Yeah, I seen yeah. like I seen like the uh, my niche. Yeah, oh, is it? I have no competition. <laughs> I know, yeah, because uh, <laughs> some of the stuff I seen you detail was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, you been been years. Yeah, those you dump make trucks. Those dump trucks. I've been doing those people since. Geez, I was in my twenties. Wow, ten like years, huh? Now, <laughs> ten years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, when I started with them, their kids were some of their kids weren't even born. Now wow. I'm cleaning their kids' cars. Oh wow. boy. Yeah. Crazy. Does it make yeah. you feel old? Oh god. <laughs> hey, you know, but but detail makes you feel young though, huh? It, it keeps yeah. your body moving and everything. It depends on what time of the day. Yeah. yeah. That's time true. You feel old. Mm -hmm. Afternoon time, you feel young. Yeah. yeah, it's it's at night when you go when you go to get up off the couch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After after twenty eight years, it yeah it uh makes it makes it hard. Yeah, yeah. I figured I'd be done by now. No way, you can't do that. <laughs> no. Uh, so, how, how long have you been with the with the Probax? Uh, about twelve years. Oh, okay. Yeah. So a little, a little bit more than twelve years. How'd Were you get in? Uh, how'd you get there? What, what What was the road to you getting there? Were you with another company? I was. was um, I was out here and I sold my company, my detailing company, to a de a Rhino Linings dealership. And I worked for them for a little bit, but they, I had a parts business connected to it. I did, um, I did um, import performance and they really wanted that, but they bought it all just to get that. Yeah. And then, um, you know, that kind of fizzled out and I moved to California. I moved back to California and I grew up in Southern California. And one day I was looking for a new job and one day I opened up the paper. I never look in the paper. And there was an ad for a, a chemical salesman and I saw the, it said prowax.com and I got on there and I was like, dang, I use all these products. Like I know this line. Mm -hmm. So interviewed, got with John Bell and that was it. Nice. Whereabouts in Southern California? Uh, I lived in Tustin. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where are you guys? North? You guys in Northern California, right? Northern, Northern yeah. California. I'm originally from the uh, Santa Barbara County though. Okay. I was born and raised in Vandenberg Air Force Base. Nice. Wow. Then I moved up here in 2000. Yeah. What is up, so DMV was... Auto Detailing? What is up? Welcome in. Yeah, that was how I got with Pro. Nice. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's a good job. It's a, it's It's fun. What I do is fun. You know, working with people, going, seeing people all over the country, It's it, it's been awesome. That's definitely some parts. Um, so to my understanding, uh, do they manufacture all their products in-house or? We do. We manufacture yeah. everything in-house, except for our aerosols. There are there are formulas. Somebody else cans them for us. Oh, OK. I get. I got you. But that's pretty cool. Probably that everything, fired right everything, now, but everything's in-house. You know, you don't have to yeah. worry about you know, a third party, you know, waiting on this, waiting on that. You can make it to your likings. Yeah. How'd you guys, uh, how'd you guys hook up with the glove box? Um, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm just being, I'm an honest guy. I have no idea how we hooked up with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I would love to see more. There's some that. things, there's some things that are not, I'm not privy to. And that was one of them. <laughs> Hmm. So I, I just I'm sure it had something John fig John, John probably got hooked up with it some somehow or another. Yeah, hmm. yeah. 
It was cool though for us because we got to see your guys' products. Because you know, if it wasn't for that, I would never have got to see it. Yeah, it's kind of a neat concept, I guess. But it looks like in the back, you end up with a lot of single bottles of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that I use one time, and then it just goes on the shelf. It's like yeah, I, right. I bounce. I, I could bounce between all the products I have. I I kind of got the same thing going on over here. Oh, okay. But I've limited it down. I, I did a uh, giveaway and I did a what I call a garage purge. And I, uh, <laughs> I gave away a ton of crap that I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to use it. Like, I'd rather give it to somebody that's going to use it, you know? And, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, you can get, you can get a lot, you can accumulate a lot of products quickly. Oh, yeah. Very. Oh, yeah. Especially through the glove box stuff. Yeah, I've got three glove box in on my uh, din dining room table that are full, and I'm like, huh? Rain, yeah, rain, no way. Hey, hey, I, I, I got four not even opened yet. Ooh. <laughs> you're like, I, you know what? what like, what, how did that come about? Like, you're like, I, I just can't figure out the right products to use, so I'm going to try and see if this company can send me something that I can do or use or what. Mm. A lot of it is just, uh, I like trying new products, you know, okay. and if I, if I like them great, you know, and, and, and I, I come to think of it too, like when I'm doing like a review on a product, you know, and I'm like, you know, let's try this out and see how it works. I'm like, dude, this stuff is awesome. It's like, okay, it's paint sealant. It's incredible, but there's a lot of incredible paint sealants out there. There's, there's there just is. so many good products. And it's like, when I first got into detailing, the first thing I did was like, Ooh, let me look up this product on YouTube and see if anybody's, you know, see what they're saying about it. Like, Oh, it's, this guy says it's good. I got to try it. So that's how I got into it. Like, well, Hey, how long have you been detailing for? I mean, I've always detailed my own cars, especially my car, you know, back in high school, you got to clean the car up and get ready to go out racing on a Friday night, you know? And, uh, but I, I started taking it seriously about two years ago and, uh, okay. got into it, learned paint polishing. And then from there, it was just like, I was hooked. You know, I was like, Oh, started buying polishers, started borrowing people's cars. Hey, let me borrow your car for the weekend. Let me borrow <laughs> and then from there it was like. Smooth sailing. You know, when I when I started detailing, there was no internet. <laughs> <laughs> Not there was no YouTube. There was no internet. That's see, <laughs> times times have changed drastically. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, like you think about that, but it's like you got to think about the evolution of detailing products. Like oh gosh, the, the market is so saturated and. Yes, there are a lot of good products out there. And there's still those people that tend to think, what's the best this? What's the best that? It does not exist. It, it really doesn't. It's it's crazy, man. So when I do when I say something's good, it's like, you guys don't have to believe me. You just have to try it for yourself. Does that well, mean I'm only going to use one product? No, I bounce through the 14, 15 different tire shines that I got, I like them. I bounce between all of them. What am I feeling today? Hmm. I'm going to get this one. You know, what paint ceiling am I going to use this time? I'm going to use this one, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, when you, um, when you use products, there, there are tools, you know, that the word that's we're, if you, like a mechanics toolbox that behind Mike is his, those are all his tools. Yep. So the more tools you can have in your arsenal, the better. Now you should have your core products. You should mm -hmm. always have your core products because you don't want to be just yep. I do. anything on a car. You don't know what, you know what I mean? There are certain areas where you should make sure you use your core products. Mm -hmm. And that way you don't screw something up and go, oh my God, what, what is this now? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So definitely, yes, trying different products is good, but you should always have your your main set of tools that you know and you you can get yourself out of any situation. Absolutely. You know, if, if if you get into a bind, you, you don't want a new product to try to get yourself out of it. 
no. Especially if you've never used it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I yeah, like I, I do like trying a few different things. Like uh I did a like last week I tried it was just a a, a basic wash and it was supposed to be just a wash and wax, but we had it was supposed to rain this week. So instead of just doing the wash and wax, uh, we got a, f- a few weeks, a few months back, we got from a DP uh, product called uh, Beat It Up. And I was like, well, I'm just going to try this. It was, and it was like, you know, it's like Bead Maker. And I yeah. tried it and, and uh, Fab, <laughs> that stuff was great. Yeah, Fab loved that stuff, dude. He that stuff me. was great. And I was like, well, I, I mean, if I put wax on this guy's car, it's, it's going to rain in two days and this wax ain't going to last on this guy's car a month. But if I put this Beat It Up, or whatever it's called, it's sitting over there. I can't see the whole thing, I know, but I know it's one you're talking about. Yeah, and I was like, well, if I put that on it, it might last a little bit longer, but it might be a little bit better too. So I end up using it, and that's the only reason why. I, and if I didn't have it, I probably would have used the uh, I don't know something else over here. I think you could have found one up there. there. You got S four <laughs> in our um in that glove box. No, oh, yeah, it's oh, sitting at the ball of S four. Yeah, it's sitting over there. I see it. Yeah. Now you can use that three different ways. That's you tell us about it, it. You can lay it on the on the panel, knock it down with one towel, polish it off with another. That's like the best way to use it. That's going to give you the most protection. Then you can just spray the towel and wipe it on that way. That's going to give you kind of an in between, you know, on a nicer car, real quick shine. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then if you if you're just washing the car and you just want to give them just an added little extra while it's wet, hit it with S4 and then mm-hmm. tur- turn your either pull your pressure washer way back and just kind of let it mist and let it spread over the surface and it'll change the water properties. You know, it'll mm. give it a good hydrophobic um, water water dot instead of you know a real flat dot. But yeah. then mm. you dry it, it won't leave any chamois marks. You got to, you know, you got to dry. If you're using a chamois, you got to keep it real. Don't leave a lot of water in it. But if you're using one of those towels, you'll get a nice shine, nice feel, everything. Nice. All right. That's yeah. good to know. So I had, that brings me to, to, to my questions because, uh, like I said, I used the coating. Mm-hmm. I didn't use the whole coating, but uh, our uncle decided to come by and say hello as I was filming. And he turned around and knocked my cart and this tipped over in the freaking cart and spilled half the bottle. I was lucky. I, that's all. That's what I had left after I finished the, uh, Range Rover. No. (laughs) Was it sitting there upside down for 40 minutes? Oh oh, man. Like he turned around and he goes, Oh, Oh, sorry about that. And he's picking it up. I was like, huh? And I look and I'm like, now that I think about it, it filled up the cup holder. I could have just, took some out of the cup holder with yeah, a, right? a little dropper and what sucked it, it up. Cup holder? Yeah, it was a it was sitting next to the cup holder and he knocked it over into the cup holder. I said no. that was what my was fault. In, wait a minute, what was it doing inside the car? No, the cup holder on my detail car. Oh, okay. <laughs> I call it a cup holder, but it's like where you stick your bottles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Yeah, I definitely. Um yeah, I'll, I'll send you out another one. That way you can give it a serious test. Did yeah, you get so through the whole car? I got through the whole car. Oh, okay. Um, it's it's a little bit different as far as applications from the other coding I've done. Um, it's like a very limited window. Yeah. You got this limited window to wipe off. If you wait a little bit too long, it's kind of a pain in the butt. If, yeah. if you go a little bit too early, it just kind of smears and it doesn't level properly. So it's like, mm-hmm. it took me, let's see, I did the whole hood. By the time I got to the fender, I kind of had it dialed in. And it was pretty warm when I was applying it too. So what, what are you in a, you have a shop or are you inside a controlled environment or? Yeah, inside my garage. I kind of give you a little, a little tour. I mean, it's not the best in the world, but. Okay. You know, it's all right. Yeah, it's 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 still, you know, I got it's what's the, the most temperature part. up there right now. Right now in my garage, it's 
No, but like when you coded it, what was it? It was in oh, it was I summer though, it, huh? I want to say it was in the 70s, maybe mid-70s. Oh. Yeah, so you were moving pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I found yeah. that I was applying it and then instantly grabbing my towel and then wiping it off. Well, you know, soon, when you lay it down, as soon as you see that rainbow effect, you're good to go, man. Like yeah. most coatings, as soon as you see that rainbow happen, it's it's adhered. Yep. You know, it's there already. And uh, there, there's there's coatings out there. We we kind of based it on I had I had used C I had left Pro for a little bit to go run a Lexus dealership. Uh -huh. Um and I was using C courts. This is before Pro had a, a coating, yeah. and I was using C courts and I could get I could set the timer for like five minutes and come back and wipe it off. But I was in a real controlled environment, you know what I mean? Like air conditioning, everything. So it was no, giving me the maximum. And then I got it was like what 60 degrees, 65 oh, degrees, yeah. yeah. 55, 60, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Probably not the whole building was that, but you know, it was it was it was in a good, you know, great, great climate, you know, everything was perfect for it. So um but then when I got pros, I tried to do it in a customer's garage. And man, I was chasing that thing. We first, when I first got it, it was even quicker. I was like, what? No way. Yeah. I had a bunch of highs. I was like, I can't believe this. Yeah, you, like sequence, yeah. I had never had highs. You gotta narrow that uh <laughs> that yeah. Up. We and and I and I when I came back on with Pro, we moved the we changed the solvent in it and got the working time longer. It was like it was like a quarter of the time when I first started using it. Yeah, it was so fast. I was, and I used it on a black GTR too. I was like, oh, oh. my god, I, I, I was so bummed. Oh man! Mm. I, I, once I found that window, though, um, I flew around that thing, and it's what's what's weird for me is I haven't applied that many coatings. I think this was my fourth or fifth coating, um, mm -hmm. but all the other coatings I've used were pretty slick. Now, to me. The slickness wasn't like, oh my God, this is the slickest ever. It really wasn't that slick. And I was like, is the coating even there? Like I was second, I was second guessing myself and the Range Rover was white. So I'm like, okay. And then as soon as I put that detailer on though, yeah, yeah. Woo, that is where the slickness came. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, okay. You know, and I know not all coatings are slick, but that doesn't mean they're not there. You know, a lot of people don't mm -hmm. realize that if it's not slick, it's not there. You know, it's like. What are you used to using? Uh, let's see. I've used the basically the Art to Shine metal oxide coating. I did two cars in that. I did the Ethos ceramic matrix coating, and then I did the graphene matrix coating. Okay. And they were the 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 metal oxide coating was a little. Um, it was super easy, but. You have like you had to keep a clean towel and you had to if you didn't look really with your paint light, the left leaves a little haze. You got to make sure you buff that off, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, the ceramic matrix from ethos, you know, was really easy. I mean, I just apply. I mean, I could have it wiped off so easy. I was like, whoa. And it was it was slick. You know, when I did this one, I was like I was doubting myself because it wasn't slick. I'm like, yeah, it takes ours has a cure time. So it goes through this process where it's it, it feels almost like sticky to the touch. Yeah. Where the coating is actually curing, the raw is actually curing. Mm -hmm. And then once that goes through, um, I'll usually give it overnight. I'll let it cure overnight. Yeah. And then hit it with S4 afterwards. And then you'll get the super slickness. Um, I have used some coatings, you know, that have are instantly slick. Yeah. So we're working on that right now. We're trying to get ours to, to, to do that too. So with these coatings, you got to constantly be changing and upgrading and, you know, you can't just leave it as is. Yeah. Yeah. I waited overnight. Luckily he was a friend of mine. So he let me keep it for a few days. I let it sit um, overnight. Next day I waited, you know, came in with that little bottle in the, S4 in the glove box. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, let me give this a try. And then I was like, 
Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I'm talking about right there. I, I even gave that to him to 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 maintain it. And yeah, I do that too. I give them a little pint. They never use it. I see it in their garage. I'm like, well. <laughs> <laughs> right. but I, usually i'll come back with the car and then it's there so i know it's there so if i have any issues you know if i if i reboost and I have any issues i'll just grab their bottle and hit it real quick yeah absolutely I mean, that's a good that's a good practice to give them a little a little bit you know that way they feel like you know they can't see the coating yeah they can't see it but i'll tell you what i was at a show and I was laying it on a panel and I was letting people lay it on a panel and I laid it on the panel about probably 20 times. It got to the point where you could run your finger across and it, it made a little bit of a ledge where you'd had come up over it. Like it, <laughs> it can layer on top of itself like that. That's a good thing about coatings, waxes and polymers. As soon as we come back over them again, it, we just get one even coat. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter how much wax you put on. It's going to be one even coat where um, coatings can actually lay upon themselves as long as you're within that window. Yeah. That uh, our window is about anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes or else it'll reject it. Oh, for uh, for the second for coat? Second coat. Right? Oh, OK, OK. Yeah, so I did his um, I did his BMW M3. I, I corrected and coded that and mm -hmm. I gave him I gave him a wash mitt, shampoo, and a topper for it. He takes care of it now. He washes it, he takes care of it, and then you know, a couple months later he bought his wife the Range Rover. He goes, I need you to do what you did to my BMW to this. Nice. Yeah, like, you did, yeah. Okay. Man, they're, right. they're hard cars. Those Range Rovers are hard. Oh. Man. Now, all that black is so hard. Like that's all a that, technique all in its own. All that piano black all over. Yeah, it yeah. was, and it was bad. I mean, it was terrible. That one, that was a good one. That one took me. I think I had about twenty three hours into that thing, man. <laughs> in a white car too. In a and white people car. Don't understand like what you got to do to these cars is unreal. Especially in that shop in your environment, the lights are right on top of the car. Yep. <laughs> It's so, like, what, approximately, what is uh, on this coating here? What what is the typical lifespan, if maintained properly? What is the typical lifespan on the on this coating? If the if the car is not garage kept, you're you're looking at about two years. Okay. If the car is garage kept, you could. I mean, I have a car. I have an M3 that I just I just did yesterday. That it's got. It's had it's had synergy on it for three years now. The coating's still working fine. Mm. We do have a really strong coating. Ours ours is really strong. Like it's very hard to take back off. You have to really go at it to get it back off. So the, what what in the coating? Because it's not just your coating. There's a couple other companies mm -hmm. that make coatings that tons. Yeah, that, that that make it somewhat sticky what in the coating makes it sticky the raw when material it comes to wipe off is it the raw material is it yeah okay if you're getting that stickiness you've left it. you went way too far you've let it go too far you gotta you you want to feel the towel kind of pull but mm -hmm. like i said as soon as you see that rainbow effect just go ahead and take it back off you're good okay so you gotta be quick so a two foot two foot area might be too big. Nah. No. Well, yeah, I shouldn't say hot. that. <laughs> if it's hot, if it's, if it's hot. Well, if, you're, if you're a beginner, yeah, you shouldn't. You know, I do I do courses, and I I'll like knock out a whole panel, and these guys are just like, "Oh my god, how are you doing that?" Mm -hmm. You know, once but, you've done a yeah. couple, like I've probably done fifty coatings. So mm -hmm. once you're once you're at at home with it and you've got it down, you'll stretch your, your amount down, you know? Yeah. You could, if you were in the right environment, you have it in a good controlled environment, no air moving through, you know, that's a mistake people make is they turn a fan on or something like that. that's detrimental. Yeah. Man. You got to get, it's got to be completely calm, you know, nice temperature. Don't be too hot. Don't be too cold. You know, lay it on there generously. Don't be real. I'll try to get three cars out of that bottle. 
Yeah. You know, if you get a car and a half, you've made out on it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, our car, our coating is is relatively inexpensive compared to some. So, out of curiosity, since we you know we didn't have to pay for this, uh, what what is the uh, price of the S one? Sorry. Oh, no. That's all yeah. good. <laughs> My but, daughter needs her medicine. Uh -oh. For S one, what what's the for the two year coating? What what's the price of it for the for it? I think it's on ProLax.com for ninety nine dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, That's the. Uh, I'm sorry, I you know I I deal with distributors, so I work in. Oh, uh, okay, uh, my bad. That's why we, that's why we had you for the professionalism. It's <laughs> well, you know. I know. Pro I'm I'm messing. With, I'm messing with you. No, no. Pro is really. Um, yeah, yeah, it's ninety nine bucks. Okay. Pro, we started as a as a we we sell to distributors. Mm -hmm. You know, we started when McGuire started. Like we there, we were the only ones back then. Yeah. yeah, we've been in business almost a hundred years. So, oh wow, you know, yeah, we've we we've been in this for a, a, a little minute. But um, you know, we went towards his selling to the distributors and letting them sell the product. Mm -hmm. So that's my main job with Pro. I work with distributors, and they sell the, you know, the the, nice. the internet and stuff like that. That's kind of an added bonus for us. Yeah. So basically, you guys have literally just about everything in a detailing aspect for every. You know, if, if a detailer wanted to open up a shop, you mm -hmm. basically have everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because we was, may not be the best of everything, but we're we're really good in a lot of key areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's it, very hard to be the best. Yeah. You know, especially with some of these compounds that are out right now, it's it's crazy what you can do with them. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it, it's it's almost amazing. So, let me ask you in in your opinion, mm -hmm. if 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 someone were to try your product, say if if they were to walk some uh, if they were to go to your website or find somewhere where they can buy Proax and mm -hmm. they were to see something on the shelf, and, and you were to say this, in your opinion, is the best product. What would it be? In our in your line, opinion. In my opinion, I would probably say if I had to pick one product that I was for sure everybody could use and it would give them the best results, mm -hmm. it would be our leather cleaner. Okay. 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 That would be the easiest one to hand anybody and they mm -hmm. could – they could they could accomplish great things with it. Okay, you, know, you can make you can change leather. It doesn't hurt it. Um, doesn't take any oils out of it. It's really mellow. I mean, and it it will change a seat. Wow. Um, but you, we have a lot of we have a lot of good products. We have a tire shine called Blue Ice Gel. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the most economical way to dress tires. I'll get out of a court. I'll get 45 cars out of it. Dang. Dang. Look at my website. Long. I'll dress those dump truck tires. If you look at my Instagram, I'll dress those dump truck tires with it. And it looks like they're wet. And it's yeah, I've seen them. Gel product. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. And that I probably... Love I'll use a pint. I'll use a pint-sized bottle of it. I'll maybe go through almost half of that pint to do six dump truck tires. Ooh. Where if you were spraying it, I used to spray it when I was younger. Uh huh. Dude, I've run through three bottles of solvent-based tire shine. Yeah. And it'd be you all over the front of the truck when it came back to me. Everything. You don't Where realize blue ice, once it sets up, it does not sling. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> so when, when, when I, I, when just, I just got the message from uh, Rick that because when I first we looked up, it was the uh, uh, it was the the two questions from the Christmas live stream. So I, I messaged Rick. Gosh dang it! You didn't freaking do the questions. He's like, it's in a folder. I'm like, where the heck's the folder? I just, <laughs> I just found them. <laughs> <laughs> I told you they were in the folder, Mike. Now you tell me. 
Well, we can do the 10 questions now if we want. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Well, Brian, uh, hey, so I got 10 random questions, and it's okay. all about you. Oh, and, wow. and, and, and they're just random questions. And we usually ask the same 10 questions to everybody. And, okay. uh, and I'm just going to pop them up on the screen, and you can answer them any way you want. Go ahead. My connections right. to detailing stems back to? When I was 13, I used to, I, I woke up in one morning and my dad said, you can either clean the, clean the kitchen or wash and wax my car. So I took wash and wax his car. Wow. If I would have cleaned the kitchen, I'd be a lawyer right now. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm not busy with detailing and growing my company, you can find me. With my family. Nice. My wife so, and two wonderful daughters. Nice. Nice. Good answer. She's Thanks. probably watching right now with the shotgun. Or playing <laughs> <laughs> the best part of my job brings me to the most satisfaction is? Working with people, helping them. Training people is my passion. Nice. That's cool. And you get to hang out with people like us. Yep. <laughs> True. Weekend warrior. Yeah. yeah. Mike details more than me, but. <laughs> Something I see happening in the detailing world I really like is. Um, I like the fact that there's a lot of people out there that offer training to detailers. When I started, there was no training. I got mm -hmm. lucky and. A, a guy named Javier took me under his wing and taught me how to detail the right way. Mm. But I've, I've seen people get thrown to the wolves and just die in the back of a detail shop. Yeah. And it sucks because it ends up giving, you end up working when you hire people, you end up hiring from the bottom end of the employee pool, which sucks. Yeah. You know, I think, I feel like now with like the IDA and, um, training and youtube even youtube can help you know you got to watch yeah. it walk. but um I, I think i think guys are coming into it with more knowledge yeah you just have yeah. to be open to new to learn still yep yeah. our other co-host rick with rat garage you learned by watching to the detail geek yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you what youtube helped me yeah i mean tremendously and and the thing is, uh, I like I'm the same way. I love helping people. And that's that's why I started a channel. Um, I say this all the time, like you can watch as many videos as you and, and listen and, and, and do all this and watch as many videos as you want. But until you get out there and you start doing it, that's when you're going to really improve and get better. Every time you detail, every time I detail, I learn something. You can't think you know everything. You can't say there's this is the way to do it and it's the right way and if you don't do it this way well blah 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 you know what everybody's after the same end result of you know making a car look good it doesn't matter how you get there if you go this way or this way or this way or this way but guess what we're all ending up right here yeah so, I, after 28 years i still learn i've probably learned more in the past five years than hmm. i did in the previous 23 years Wow. That's awesome. And that's one of the reasons why I like doing these live streams. Cause you know, when I meet people like you, if it's, if it's, you know, from manufacturers, if it's either from you or from another detailer, you know, I'm going to learn something that I didn't know. And, yeah. and it's, and it's going to stick in my head. And that's, that's, uh, and that's why I like doing these things, which is cool. Oh yeah. Definitely. So for me, I like it. So piggybacking off question four into question five, something I see happening in the detailing world I don't really like is. Hmm. I don't like when I don't like when people aren't open to um, suggestions and I don't like people underpricing their work. Mm -hmm. I don't like I that, that dealerships still take advantage of detailers. Oh my lord, I hear it. Yep, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and and that's probably the most 
that's probably one of the things I, I dislike the most is is the way de- dealerships. When I was it, when I, I was I had a shop. I had seven dealerships, right? I had five guys working for me. This was in the late nineties. I was getting seventy five dollars a car, anywhere from seventy five to one hundred and twenty five to do these cars, right? Mm-hmm. This is a full detail. Inside out carpet. Yep. Tracting everything. Huh? Yeah. Worst of the worst. Cars from the back lot. Everything their guys couldn't handle came to me. Wow. Was, and you know, I still see guys today getting seventy five dollars a car. Mm. And I just think to myself, why are you doing this? Like, yeah, you're spinning your wheels. Like, you're not making any money. Their shops are a mess. They're they're a mess. They're just getting run over. And the dealerships don't care. They don't care. Nope. They sure yeah. don't. I've known people that, you know, for details. We work. I we uh we own a family automotive repair shop. So I'm a full-time mechanic. So okay. We have, you know, contracts with dealerships. And uh, you know, growing up, you know, we used to be over the dealerships all the time picking up used cars, uh, safety inspections so they can get them out on the lot. And, you know, we'd go over there to pick up cars and, you know, we'd get to know the detailers over there and man, I'd go in there and they'd be hustling, man. I'm talking like hustling. And I never knew how much they made. I knew it wasn't a lot, but like you said, the dealer don't care. All they care about is cars get clean. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I started when I, when I moved to Delaware, I was making 2850 a car. Wow. Yeah. Me and my buddy would split everything in half. We'd cut it right down the middle and we had an awesome system. We'd do six cars so we could get three done each in a day. Mm. And it still didn't hit a hundred bucks. Yeah. It's crazy. That's insane. What's up, Rick? Look, everybody. Rick, Rick's here. Are you sorry? Are you at the hockey game still, Rick? Just tuning in? I was just cursing him out on the on the message, and then I had to apologize to him. <laughs> What's up, Matt Duffy? How you doing, buddy? All right. So, question six. This could be a good one too. If I could travel ten years or so back in time, the advice I would give myself is: Good question. Go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if, you're, you know? if you're staying in the detailing world, I would say invent a Rupes or Flex polisher. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because the cordless one? Anyone. <laughs> anyone. Anyone that wasn't a rotary polisher. Yeah. I can't, I, I don't even want to, I don't even want to see the damage I did when I used to rotary. <laughs> <laughs> and I was considered the best around here. Everybody thought uh, every time I'd go out, even even when I'd go out with John and and do demos and stuff, they'd be like, "Man, he's a good wheel man." That's you, you don't meet guys like him. And it, it, I just now I just I look at my rotary and I I use it sometimes, but it's sparingly. Yeah, definitely. For me, success is. Um, for me, success right now would be training as many people as I can. Having a successful training business would would, would be success for me. Is that separate than what you're doing with Pro? Yeah. Nice. All right. My little side hustle. Nice. One of the greatest challenges I have faced in my career is. Hmm. That's a good one. Let me get, go to the next one. Let me come back to that one. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> when I've had a great day, I, I sometimes reward myself by having a nice dinner. Oh, nice. Nice steak or what? Lobster? Yeah, yeah nice steak dinner. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice. So this next question is this. Uh, we've had some very unique answers, and we've always asked somebody, uh, we've asked some everybody, but we've had uh, some of the questions, answers from uh, from either like a Roku vacuums and all kinds of stuff. But a non-related detailing purchase that has left you highly satisfied is 
I just made a great purchase. Uh oh. That was, um, I just bought two new Karcher vacuums. Oh, nice. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I used to use, um, I used to buy Niflex Altos. And um, these, this Karcher, this Karcher model I got is sweet. It like pounds on the filter while you're vacuuming. But yes. It keeps the filter clean all the time. So yep. Like yep. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. Hilti, Hilti makes those type too. Yes. And it's like much, what you're talking about. How much? Are, how much do those cartridges run? Two fifty a piece. So I mean, we go back. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Dude, I I have a Niflex Alto. I bought for four hundred bucks. Right. It's nine years old. If I would have bought Home Depot Rigids, yeah, I'd have bought twelve of those by now. It went oh, through. I ran a car wash with it, a full service car wash. It 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 detailed in car wash. It detailed in dealerships. I mean, this thing runs and runs. Oh, mm. man. I, I feel like if if you're number one, a a Home Depot rigid vacuum, they say will pull 105 cfm's, but that's not with the hose on. That's right at the port. Okay. Uh, with the hose on, you're probably at 60 if you're lucky. Okay. Mm. Uh, you know, 60 CFMs, you're missing a lot of stuff. Yeah. Huh. You're going over and over again. I don't you know? know who in their mind would buy a rigid. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention that thing is so loud. Your your wife probably is like, oh my God, here we go again. I, I put the muffler on it and it really makes a difference, but. <laughs> Yeah, now, you, now you're losing even more power. Oh, no. Because the out is, is, you know, if you pull more air in, on it, you're a mechanic. Be, uh, if you pull more air into the engine, you have to improve your exhaust, right, to keep, to keep that horsepower. Yeah. You can't exit it fast enough. I have to so meet so California um, emissions. <laughs> emissions. <laughs> <laughs> I got to smog it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> And register it too. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so I've I've always been a, a proponent of good vacuums. Yeah, I mean, shoot, if you're using it all day every day, you want. Oh you gosh. know, that's why everybody asks me, why don't you buy a Rupes? Why don't you buy a Rupes polisher? Because I have, you know, I've got my Shine Made, I've got my Max Shine polishers. I said, look, if I was detailing every day and I was polishing every day. I could see, you know, spending the money on a Flex or, or a Rupes, but I don't do it every day. What I have works just fine. I mean, you know, same thing. My little rigid, you know, I've had this thing for almost two years. It'll work solid. But then again, you probably use your vacuum more in one month than I've used this in two years. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like all depends on how much you use it, how hard you work it. Yeah, especially when you goes into them dump trucks because them dump trucks are nothing friendly of a lot of dust and dirt. Well, no, not only that though, you gotta have a hose that's fifteen feet long. Yeah, oh yeah, that rigid will be nothing at fifteen feet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing at the end. Mine <laughs> yeah, can yeah. pick up a can pick up a basketball and hold it there. Yeah, oh, nice. At your the end of the hose, your carcher. Yeah, the carcher. Dang, I'm gonna have to look into that thing. I mean, do I need one? No, but I like to spend money on that necessary stuff. <laughs> it's 250 bucks. It's one car, dude. One car. You've got your. You, if if how much was your scan tool at work? Oh, you see this? My hair's gone because of how much. Yeah. I yeah. How much do you pay the craftsman? How much do you pay the snap-on guy every week? I had to I had to drop a piece of blood and then put it on the paper and then sign. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'll, funny i lost a every once in a while you lose a tool man when you're a mechanic yeah. it happens and yep. it's been i've been so good about it and i freaking lost my 12 millimeter freaking open end wrench and i know exactly which car it was in too and i just completely forgot to grab it i was like oh man that sucks and our snap on guy just quit too so i'm like oh, oh. yeah Cool. Now, yeah, even if he was, even if he didn't quit, he'd uh, he. Um, can you advise what Karcher vacuum was? Yeah, hold on a second. Granular Auto Spa. Um, got my, got me wondering too. Pick up. I thought you were gonna say a bowling ball at first. I was gonna be like, I'm ordering one right now. 
<laughs> you know, there's another one that uh dude that even, a, even a basketball is it's the karcher nt yeah there's another one too that that works really well nt tell him 40-1 it's like 40 backslash one nt yeah i'll put it right here oops i put question mark oops 40 and t there it is. No, Keith, it was not my 10 millimeter. I make sure I have that. <laughs> what happened was I dropped it and it fell in between. It went down into the spot where you could never think a freaking wrench could go. And I and I waited for it and it didn't hit the ground. And I was like, oh, I had to go underneath and take the all the plastics out and go through the fender liner to grab it. And I was trying to get the job done. I was like, okay, I'll grab it. I'll grab it when I'm done. So got the alternator out, put the alternator in, got everything done, and then just completely spaced it. So it's sitting in her passenger side fender well underneath. <laughs> and it's, it's, she's probably wondering what the heck that vibrating that noise is. Like, you're like, uh, hey, can you bring your car back? My wrench is in your <laughs> Yep. I, I called her and left her a message. And Did you? I'm hoping, I'm hoping she gets back to me because she was – it was one of those she called and said i'm on my way from you know i'm on my way out to where was it um what's it say? past sacramento she was going somewhere past sacramento and she was like i need to get there you know she didn't have an appointment or nothing she just came in and, and towards the end of the day and i was like all right let's try to knock it out and that's what i get amazing it's amazing how like protective we get of tools, you know. Oh man! <laughs> like those vacuums, my guy took it, and I said, "Okay, let's clean the vacuums." And he's like, "Today?" I'm like, "No, next week." I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> today, yeah, of course today, dude. But he takes my, it. My kids do the same thing. <laughs> this is a brand new vacuum. Turns it upside down and sets it on the ground. I about choked him. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> And then he's like, and then he's like, dude, it's just a vacuum. I'm like, dude, say that again. See how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for that vacuum, you'd be fired because even with that vacuum, you can't vacuum right, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Brian, I, I want to say thank you for coming on, talking to us, sharing some knowledge. I do appreciate right, you staying up. No worries. You're on the East Coast. It's almost 10 o'clock there, your time. Oh, okay. Yeah. He I messaged know. me earlier thought it was 6 o'clock his time. He, I know. When he messaged me, it was like 7 his time. He's like, did I miss it? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my Lord. What did I do? I was like, no, 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 no. It's 6 o'clock my time, bro. He's like, oh, phew. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I text John. I'm like, I missed the live cast, dude, just so you know. I don't want to get an email. Like, Mike called me and said, you missed the – you missed the – uh live the live stream but yeah i was stoked that it was 6 p.m so that's why i always say 6 p.m pst pacific center time i always say that after every message dude, do you think oh, i actually man. looked at it dude come on <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even i do yeah. appreciate it, brian and right, uh I thank i, I want to say thank you everybody for coming on and in two weeks from tonight we'll have our next guest which is the the detail keg uh, i don't know if you guys have ever seen that it's a keg like you put detailing products in there nice. and uh and you actually i don't know how it works we're gonna find out how it works in two weeks that's our next live stream hey green i will detail us appreciate the sticker Definitely. robert ramirez you're late you're gonna have to watch the replay we're actually gonna uh and uh just let you guys know fab automotive is still doing a live stream so if you guys Want to uh, say goodnight to everybody, take off here and say goodbye to Brian, and go over to Fab Automotive and check it out. Yep, Detail Cake will be in two weeks. And hey, we'll see you guys. All. Huh. It, hey, if you want to check us out, we're at ProWax.com. And I have a link to everything in the description for ProWax, to their Instagram, and to their YouTube channel. And yeah. if you guys, Brian, if you want to stick around for a minute, I'm going to end this, uh, the live stream, and we'll be backstage for a minute. Sweet. Have a good night, everybody.